So here you are, Theo. Hey, everyone. Um, I'm Theo Goodman, and today I'm going to tell you about NIM. Um, does anyone in here drink water? No. Good, good, because humans drink water. That's a good, that's a good first sign. So uh, I'm going to, NIM is a mix net, and, uh, but first we're just going to, ha we're going to go through a discussion that some guys had the other day, you know, because internet traffic is observable by GPA. So GPA is global passive adversary, you know, like NSA or big China, all that stuff. But I use Grin, which is a really cool privacy shit coin, and Tor and Signal. On-chain on metadata can be harvested and exploited. I use Signal. Traffic analysis of Signal can reveal who is talking to who, when and where, through the metadata, if you observe the, the Signal servers. I thought if I use a privacy shitcoin, I'm good to go. Fuck. Yeah, so this is a... Typical thing, I, I, used, I used Monero, I'm good. I used Pepe Cash, I'm fine. I used Ethereum, I'm safe. But there's still the metadata out there. So there's, again, the basic problems. Internet traffic is observable, and that goes for if you use uh, Zcash, if you use Ethereum, Monero, Grin, all that stuff, it's, you can all observe it, and you can do chain analysis, um, all, the, all the things going in and out of the servers, and Tor, um, it just really ob obscures your IP address geolocation, not the metadata. So we need privacy on a different level. Um, again, and also there's um, no incentives. So Tor, uh, the usage of Tor has gone up a lot in the last years. But there's still only about 7,000 or 8,000 nodes. And the geolocation of those nodes, the diversity of them, is not growing. It's not expanding. It's all on a volunteer basis. A lot of them are in Germany, but that's not really growing as, as the network usage grows. So, there's no, so the incentives are messed up. And uh, what, can, what could uh, some of the you know, global adversaries, passive adversaries, use all this data for? What do they want to know? Why are they trying to... Um, you know, anticipate, you know, what I'm going to drink. If I'm going to drink Granat Apfel uh, Mate or the normal one, or what are they using all this for? Well, maybe for a social credit system, maybe for, um, to stop whistleblowers, maybe to, you know, just commercialize mass surveillance in general. So just want to tell you, back up a little bit and tell you a little bit about NIM and uh, where the team comes from, where, uh, where some of this technology comes from. So after the uh, Snowden re revelations, um, some people created uh, Panoramics, and they approached the European Union for funding to build a mix net because they said Europe can't depend just on tour um, they need to build something stronger and not just depend on, on tour. And uh, so they, and Panoramix um, invented something called Lupix. They built Lupix, and Lupix is being used in a lot of mixed nets that right now, I'll get into that too. And um, over here, uh, the obscure Lubden startup that made Facebook's Libra possible. So there's also an ironic link um, to NIM and Facebook, which seems weird. But uh, George in the picture, um, his startup was bought. He, he was working on NIM, which is anonymous mixnet technology. And then he was essentially poached uh, by Facebook. And now he works on Libra. However, one other guy, from Dave, from, that was also went over to Facebook, left Facebook to work on NIM. So it's kind of an ironic, uh, it's kind of like it could be made into a TV show one day. But uh, if you do so, maybe give us some credit. So Mixnet, what is a Mixnet? Has anyone ever heard of a Mixnet? Maybe anonymous uh, email re remailers? Good, for example, I mean, they've been around for a while. Um, for example, Adam Beck, uh, who's really into Bitcoin, he used to have an email remailer that used a Mixnet. It was really slow, high latency, and it was abused. And when Adam Beck did that, he was like, damn, what, maybe I need to 
create something like proof of work so that it's not Sybil attacked all the time. So that was one of the motivations to do that. So now we're, but the thing was they were very, they're very slow and they have high latency, but now with the technology we have today, we have an opportunity to bring this old technology back and maybe use it for something really, really useful. So just like Tor, maybe you're familiar with that, it does have multiple hops. What it ha what something that's unlike Tor is that it has decoy traffic, so-called cover traffic. And the other thing that's very, very important, unlike Tor, is that it has, the, the timing is obscure. So it's asymmetrical timing of the cover traffic. So it's not like, like earlier I thought if that was a techno club upstairs, someone was banging. But so if, it, if, the, if the cover traffic is like a techno club, well then, I mean, a global adversary can, you know, see through that eventually. But if it's like a scratching DJ that's changing the BPMs all the time, depend, dynamically, depending on the packets coming in and the amount of them, then it's really hard to figure out, like, who is the, do I want to watch this packet? What's this? It all kind of blends in. And it's, it's very plausibly deniable about what packet is what. So that's kind of a way to explain it, you can imagine. And it's scalable, like Tor, in the sense that it's a general mix net. It's made for, so here we're at the Ethereum meetup. Well, the, a mix net is essentially a message can be sent through, and it could be a signed transaction. It could be a simple Ethereum transaction. It could be dApps that want to use it. But we also don't want to say, only, this is like only for Ethereum. No, it could be Bitcoin. Could Bitcoin transactions could go through it. Messaging system like WhatsApp could use it, for example. Because we all, they, you need a lot in order to have a good anonymity set. You need a lot of traffic. You don't need to specialize. You need to have more of a general scope, like Tor. Tor also does that. So this is how it works. A basic outline of how it works. The uh, Sphinx, the packets come in. The mix nodes are in the middle with the N, and then uh, the dummy packets or the decoy traffic also is in there. Timing, also the timing thing happens all in there, and the packets go out. And you can compare that. So this is, if I don't fall down here. So Tor looks more like this, and a VPN looks more like this. So you can compare the different things that are added, mostly the decoy traffic and the timing of that. Um, so maybe you've heard of Cats and Post, which is a pretty cool project. Um, it uses Lupix, what I was talking about earlier that, that they worked on. So that uses Lupix. And uh, while that's cool, it's highly specialized. So that's one problem. It's, like right now, I think it's used for mostly email. It's highly specialized. And it's uh, kind of unclear who gets to run a node. It's not permission, like not anyone can just join the mixed node network, as far as I understand, current, the current update. And then there was this other thing that came out, um, Mason, but Mason is essentially a fork of Katzen Post, which also uses Lupix, and it says it's just for Ethereum. So there's a lot of problems there. The problem is, is that it's highly specialized, like I said. So then the anonymity, the anonymity set is just as big as all the dApps, maybe, if that's what it's made for, all the Ethereum users, and not as big as, as it could be, for example. The other thing is, that um, both uh, Cats on Post and Mason, they don't have the, the, they don't change the speed of the cover traffic. So there's a, so there's a problem there. So maybe it's just as even questionable as if it's better than using Tor or not. So you're gonna go through my points again. Uh, centralized and permissioned PKI. So it's not, not anyone can join either one of those networks as a mixed node, it's unclear who controls that right now for both of those. Whereas with NIM, it's gonna be a permissionless network uh, for the mixed nodes. So, and here we go to kind of like, see, Cats and Post, and Mason, Mason is Cats and Post, Lupix, NIM, the team, NIM team gave you Lupix and addressing issues with scalability and privacy of Lupix. There you go. I could have just done that instead of Wall of Text, but here we go. So, NIM. Uh, blockchain, PKI, private key, credentials, anonymous credentials, and the validators, they kind of watch over the network and check that the mix nodes are not acting maliciously and trying to DDoS everything. And if they do, they get kicked out of the network. This is a very simplified way to explain it, but that's how it works. And the tokens reward 
the mix nodes as a kind of proof of mix. So yeah, and this is how I was talking about how the DJ is scratching and he's changing the speed, oops, he's changing the speed of the records and going back and forth and you can't really tell. So this is, di it's dynamically controlled how the decoy traffic and how the network adjusts, so it's scalable. Because if you just set it as one parameter, then it's, it's easy. It's the same thing like, OK, I got 120 beats per minute, and I just set the decoy traffic as 120 beats. OK, that's more confusing, but it's not that hard to, to see through it. Again, permissionless mix mining. So instead of proof of work, proof of mix for the mix nodes. Um, let's see, what else? Validators uh, transform NIM tokens into credentials. So the thing is that um, the whole thing with the validators, you'd almost need a whole other talk to, to, go, to go about that. And um, there's also a video um, from Harry from Chaos Communication Camp that was in the summer. But um, basically, like I said, the validators are just watching the, the, mi the mixed nodes and making sure that they're not malicious and they're actually doing what they say they're going to do. So timeline, we're actually on time. Amazing, huh? So check this out. So we have uh, De December 2019, test de testnet debugging at uh, CCC. Check. That happened. Testnet launched with some volunteers from the workshop at, uh, in Leipzig then. January 2020, launch alpha test next with volunteer. Check. It's live. You can join it now. Um, February 2020, launch apps on alpha testnet. Should be no problem. There is someone that already has a messaging app um, that is using the test net right now. So that's pretty cool. Um, very big goal by the end of 2020, launch mainnet and end mass surveillance. What do you think? Possible? OK. Wait. So I think this is where we're, this is where we're right now. We're hope, hopeful Wojak with a, with a really cool NIM t-shirt. Right now, they're very rare, the NIM t-shirts. But they were available at CCC. But now we're this is kind of hopeful, Wojak. I think this is the state of the project right now. And if you want to um, communicate with any of us, check out you can check out Telegram, uh, t.me nimchan uh, nimtech.net. And if you want to get into the technical, uh, nimtech. Uh, slash docs. Also, I think the other one had the GitHub. Here is where you can download the node right away and just connect. It's pretty self-explanatory, and that's what I've got. Thank you very much. So, any questions? Uh, is the PKI just a smart contract, or how is it solved? Because I remember mm -hmm. last time I talked with Harry, there wasn't really a full solution to it. Good question. Um, I don't think it, it's not just one smart contract, but I also cannot explain it off the cuff uh, because they have all these. So each epoch of the mixing has some kind of encryption thing that they do, and then the validators check it. I can't tell you okay. much more than that. It's not just one smart contract, though. It's more complicated. Okay. It's probably why he couldn't say either. All right. Thanks. More questions? Any other questions? Please feel free to contact me when we're just hanging out here, if anyone's around. Question in the back? Does NIM have the concept of hidden services? That's a good question. So right now, um, there, so there was a question, can't you run the validator in the uh, mixnet itself? And uh, theoretically, you could. But right now, we're not there yet. Because there's some kind of, there could be, I think there could even be collusion problems. So you want the PK, so just for example, hidden service, let's say that the, uh, the validator with the public addresses was hidden. Um, Right, I mean, there's kind of like a discussion about that. Maybe in the future, after every th after the real simple things work, but um, right now, no. Do we have a last question? All right. So thank you very much. Theo. Thank you.